Hey everybody, Heather from Hooked on Pickin. I am doing an evening live broadcast, which I don't normally get to do. I usually do it during the day, but my children have sacrificed not watching YouTube this evening so that I can come live to you guys that are usually working a nine to five and need to get some Q&A done in the evening. So hopefully um, I'll be able to catch you guys. We're going to wait a a few people jump on go ahead and comment right away so that we know you're here um, and I would love to be able to ask you answer your guys's questions during this time okay AB04100 says hello awesome Cheryl Brown says hello all okay so we'll try to say hi when uh, you jump on mess budget mum says hiya <laughs> awesome oh boy they're flying up now. the flying okay we yeah. may miss you but are Hagee one says hello uh, Manuel Rivera says, hello, Don Gomez, hi everyone, Joe Harrell, hello, Mary Beth uh, Ripper says, hello, awesome. sorry if I'm mispronouncing your names, Stumpy Joe 911, howdy, Zombiek 98, hi, Tracy Miller, hello, love the videos, Anna Brown, Anita from Shelbyville, Kentucky, howdy. Awesome. Christopher West, we see his name a lot. Hey yep. everyone, Pat Abbott. Hi everyone, Patrice from South Carolina. Okay, oh. so there will be more people that jump on live and we might not be able to say hi to you, but thank you for being here. Go ahead and comment your questions as we go through 10 things that make life easier as a reseller. Uh, this is an evening broadcast, so hopefully we'll get a lot more of you that I see in the day. Um, like I said, my kids have sacrificed watching YouTube during this time. Um, we we have told them they are not allowed to be on the live, to be on the Wi-Fi right now. But I wanted to also let you guys know that I am selling all of these hats on my website, hookedonpicking.com. These are great hats, um, you know, for the man in your life. Or I love to wear these. I'm a military vet, so they're actually um, American flag hats. This one's really cool. It's got a patch, and you can remove it. it says USA. But Put a patch in its place that maybe your unit patch and so this is a good option this one is super soft too so my brother-in-law actually loves to wear this when he works out because it's very comfortable um, and it's got the velcro and soft um, siding to it but these are also really nice they're all adjustable and then these are really fun ones for ladies it's got a removable pom-pom you can put different things on it but the one that you order for me will be burgundy with a pom-pom don't worry we'll get to the 10 things that make life easier Guys, as a reseller yeah, guys, if you'd like to wear these, go for it. Um, right, so I got black and red, and then, of course, my blinged out hats that I absolutely love. These are my fave um, American flag hats. I'm trying not to get it stuck to my, <laughs> my uh, headband there. So, um, and then of course, blinged out USA. I had another one with an American flag on it. It's on Amazon under my listing, but I don't have any on my store right now. Yes, question. Uh, Sherry says, hello from Florida. Awesome. Uh, Simeon says, hi. Carmen, hi, love your channel, very inspiring. Awesome. Andrea from Ontario, Canada says, hi. Jason Lee, hey guys from Indiana. Uh, Greg Kennedy, love watching all your videos. Uh, Simon, hello from Jamaica. Hey, awesome. Yeah. I wish I was in Jamaica right now. It's like 30 degrees outside here. And then I do have questions starting to appear. Cheryl Brown asks, couldn't find your pet items online. Beds from that bowl. Yes, I haven't listed my pet items yet because I just got the palette. So you guys that watch my YouTube channel actually are the first ones to see my pet items. So I've already got someone who wanted to buy this one. Um, and so they've got an invoice sent to them, but all of my other pet beds are for sale. Just go ahead and shoot me a message on hookedonpicking.com. Contact me and this offer me a price. I'll add the shipping to it. Just leave your at your full address and I can calculate that to you. So just contact me that way and it'll give me an email and then I can send, set up an invoice for you. Okay. Uh, Mike Janeway says just found your channel today uh, already looking at getting an order from bulk awesome hey well good timing that you jumped on a live feed so I wanted to cover some things um, that are 10 things that make life easier as a reseller but I got some questions coming in so I'm gonna try to answer those while we're live sorry lots of questions okay zero four one hundred says my husband loves his hat so much he bought four That's awesome perfect um, 
Zera De Decom Zerad says, is there still room to start a successful reseller business? Yes, there still is. A lot of people ask, why do I give out this info? Well, it's like two flies fighting over an elephant when it comes to the online resale market. So there's plenty of room. And right. go ahead. And Amazon is a trillion dollar business. That's trillion dollar. So, so I'll could. take a piece of that trillion dollars. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so that's just Amazon. Think of all the other places. Hot Miss Budget Mom donated $5. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, when I'm on a live feed, if you're actually watching live, you can donate and give me a coffee. I drank lots of Starbucks today because I went to the mall with my daughter, which is another reason why I get to do this business. My kids were home, gave me the opportunity to do that. So if I talk really fast, it's because I got a lot of espresso in my system right now. Go ahead and donate. Also, um, I also have a Patreon page. All my patrons knew I was going to give on, get on this live feed before I did it. And so that gives you exclusivity. And so if you're interested in doing that and supporting me on a regular basis, go ahead and check the link below on the Patreon page. More questions. Um, Zerad says, are the items from bulk already picked through or are they still good? No, I get a lot of good items. If you watch a lot of my unboxings, you can kind of see in what condition. I recently did a scratched and dent palette, which is not the normal that I do. And then I also did some uninspected returns. That's usually the best category for me, but um, the, no, they're not really picked through. Um, and I get exactly what you see on the website. Uh, Sherry Tallman asks, question ready for us to start off with it. Uh, question ready for us to start off with a case or a pallet if you've never sold on Amazon what would be better a case or pallet um, I would say a case um, and if you um, behind me is a pallet I don't know that you want that much stuff in your space to initially to start with um, a case is about this big um, and so it's a much better quantity size to start off with so it doesn't overwhelm you a pallet's a lot longer to get through and so I would suggest a case also the cost is usually lower uh, Jody uh, Minima, uh, the, that Poshmark Canadian. Oh, that's cool. Says, hello, I uh, hope you're not selling anything for $2 anymore on Posh. No, I am not. And partly because they raised the rates because of the shipping change. So, no, I don't sell anything for $2. Uh, Cheryl Brown, Brown donated $5. Thank you, Cheryl, for the coffee. Thanks for the donation. She also asked the question, is there a technique to itemizing uh, uploading bulk items online? Um, as far as the way that I list, I usually just try to stick to a similar category. Um, and so if I've got a lot of one kind of thing, I list all of those at the same time. And so then it helps on um, cut down on my research time and things like that. Listing all the same types of things at once. So if I get a, a bulk case that has clothing, I'm going to do all the sweatshirts at the same time, all the shoes at the same time, all the coats at the same time. So that kind of helps to make it a little bit faster. I hope that answered your question. Cheryl Brown, thank you so much. She says, hey, peeps, hit that thumbs up and like. Yes, yeah, like please hit the thumbs up and uh, like button because that really helps me. Also, if you want to donate for the coffee or you want to donate for Patreon, go ahead. There's a really cool video that my husband, the voice behind the camera, and I did. He actually came out from behind the camera and we recorded how we started off. If you become one of my patrons, even for as little as $5, you get to see that video. It's one of the uh, benefits that I gave um, because we reached the $100 mark on Patreon. Go ahead. Uh, Joe Mark says, hi, Heather. It was great speaking with you the other day. Awesome. Yes. So I also offer consultation phone calls and I love to help one-on-one -on -one individually to, to help you with your specific needs. So uh, more questions rolling a great in. Great question from Greg Kennedy. He said, okay. I got a case from Bulk and uh, the MSRP on uh, some things are way off. Is that a common thing? Okay. So Bulk, when they give you the manifest, they give you the retail value. And that's like initially when the thing first sold, when it first hit the market. And so, yes, you're going to get things um, that are going to be marked $70 that clearly right now are not worth $70. If I look it up online, it's only worth 20. And so, yes, it's usually pretty inflated, but that's the initial price when it first hit the market. So just take that into consideration when looking at the retail value. It definitely helps when choosing. If you see a high retail value and the cost of the, the pallet or case is much lower, that's usually what interests me in looking. But I definitely, as a reseller, don't think that 
that I'm going to make that actual retail value out of it. So good question. Uh, Tracy Miller or Kathy Hershey, thank you so much for hitting the thumbs up and thank you for encouraging others. Yes, to thank you so much. Hot Mess Budget Mom says, what size poly bags do you use for clothes for storage and shipping generally? I'm glad you said that. That's actually in my number one top 10 things that make life easier as a reseller. So I'm going to jump into that and it will answer the poly bag question. So supplies is the number one thing that I think that you need to have if you're online reselling and various things constitute supplies. Boxes, which I just reuse a lot of my Amazon boxes. I've got packing and padding paper. This is the cheapest way to pad, but there's some things that you want to pad with bubble wrap if they're a little bit more delicate. And then boxes. And I get a lot of my boxes for my Poshmark and other things from the post office, but you can also buy them at Walmart. I've got these really huge ones over here. Um, that are really awesome. They're 18 by 18 by 24. So those are nice. And I buy them from Walmart and they're really, really cheap. I think they're only like a dollar or something. And then poly bags. You asked the question about poly bags. This is a nine. 12. I like to get the resealable ones. Sometimes you can even get the ones with the suffocation warning on them for if you're going to send them into Amazon. But the 9 by 12 is the perfect for most sizes. You can also get an 18 by 24 and this works great for like sweaters. These are my gray ones which I can do shipping in. I usually get clear ones for my Poshmark storage because so that I can see which item it is when I go to find it again. So normally the sizes that I use and these are also in the supply category and I also use packing tape obviously with a dispenser that's the biggie so bubble wrap boxes packing tape poly bags um, and then padding packing taper are number one on my top 10 things that make life easier as a reseller do we have any questions about that or keep on rolling um, there is a question not okay. about the, the packaging someone says uh, or excuse me CJ Spino says do you ever source while on vacation somewhere away from home? Yes, I always source. I, I guess it's just the reseller in me. I'm always kind of in let's find treasures mode. So yes, I source on vacation. Uh, Joe Marks asks, uh, or doesn't ask, but comments, a box resizer will save you money on your shipping. Yes, you can get a um, box resizer if you have like a giant box and it'll change the shape. Very good. And they're not very expensive. Um, another thing that's pivotal, number two, so number one is supplies, number two, this thing right here, smartphone. You will use this all the time. I use it for research when I'm out in the store sourcing. I use it for research when I'm at home uh, sourcing. Um, so smartphone is a huge. So that's number two of 10 things that make life re uh, easier as a reseller. It's nice to just have basically the internet and the palm of your hands. I would suggest if you don't have a, um, uh, an unlimited data plan, it's something that I would suggest you get because trying to find or connect to a store's Wi-Fi, sometimes they're really slow and it's difficult. So that would be the next one. Question. Uh, let's see, Taco Stacks. Hey, love your channel, by the way, Taco Stacks. I watch your YouTube channel. Awesome. Uh, he says, I do prefer that tape dispenser over the factory style. Yes. Yeah, you know we had the big gun one with the big gray handle, and I hated it. I hated it. This cheapo little one is the one. It's got a three-inch size hole on it. They have ones with one-inch size holes, but then you're buying tape all the time. The three-inch size hole, um, dispenser and this just the cheapo one works the best. Um, I hate the big guns because they always get stuck all the time. Yes. Uh, Octaboo says, how do you get started reselling on Amazon? Well, Octavia, uh, listen up. She's going through the top 10 uh, different things that would really help. You. Yeah, these are supplies and things that I would suggest doing. Um, as far as getting started, go ahead and sign up for a consultation phone call at hookedonpicking.com. I can give you all the necessary info. Yes. Hot Mess Budget Mom says, do you think you need uh, a laser jet printer like it says on Amazon seller apps? for printing off labels and barcodes, or can I get by with my inkjet for a while? Okay, I will, d I will discuss that because that's actually on my list, so I will get there. Um, and so actually, um, I'll go ahead and, should I address that now? Nah, just keep going. Okay, I'll just keep going. So number three, along with your smartphone, you're gonna want the Amazon seller app. It's shocking when I talk to some of you guys that are getting ready to start and you've signed up for your Amazon store and you're super excited and you don't use the Amazon seller app. Blah! Use the app, okay? If this is the one thing you remember from this video, if you're an Amazon FBA seller or an Amazon Merchant Fulfill seller, use the Amazon seller app. It is different from the Amazon.com app. It's got a black background icon. It's free once you sign up for an Amazon seller account. It gives you sales ranks. 
it gives you um it gives you prices, it gives you fees, it gives you whether or not you're restricted, it gives you whether or not it's hazmat, all these things. I have a three-part Amazon seller series. If you're a patron, it's right on the patron page. I think um, it's also available on my YouTube channel. It'll just take some hunting under my how-to section, but use the Amazon seller app, okay? Um, and if you want, go ahead and email me at hookedonpicking.com. I can link those to you if you have trouble finding them, but use the app. Number four, Disinfecting wipes. These are the cheapo Walmart brand, but it's basically the Lysol wipes. What was number three? Oh, sorry, Amazon seller app. So number oh, one was supplies. <laughs> number two, not listening. He should have been listening. All right, number one was supplies. Number two was the smartphone. Number three was Amazon seller app. And number four, disinfecting wipes. And the reason I always get these is these are phenomenal for cleaning off anything that has a little bit of dirt on it. Getting, um, it helps when you remove tags to get the stickiness off. And so these are beneficial all the time. So use these all the time. It really helps to make things look nicer when you're taking the pictures. You know, it can, you can scrub it on a piece of clothing and it gets everything off. Um, number five, so one supplies, two smartphone, three Amazon seller app, four disinfecting wipes. Number five are your scales. Okay, I got a fancy schmancy scale, but it's because I weigh really heavy boxes. I ship a lot of heavy things. This goes up to 100 pounds, and I just bought this right offline. And then I've got a little itty bitty one. Um, this one is um, the first one that I ever used. Um, and this one goes up to 20 pounds. And so making sure you have a scale for all your shipping needs. And also when you're sending into Amazon, remember if you ship into Amazon FBA, nothing over 50 pounds per box. You can have more than 50 pounds in the shipment, but you can't put more than 50 pounds in one box or they will ban you from shipping in. They yelled at me for that once. So, um, so making sure you have scales um, and you can, if you're just gonna sell small things, you can get away with just this guy. Um, and then I also have another scale that I got from one of my liquidators that actually goes from basically zero to a hundred as well. And it's a smaller size one like this. All right, so then label printer. You asked the question about the label laser writer. Um, the reason why they like the laser writer over the inkjet is because it generally doesn't fade. This is a Dymo label writer 450. It's the smaller one. You can even get a double one that has the skinny slot and then the wide slot for the big shipping labels. So it depends on how much shipping you do. I actually have two. I have this one and then I have the 4XL because I got this one a long time ago. The 4XL does the big shipping labels that are about like these, these size labels. And then um, this one does the real skinny ones that are like address size. When I first started for the first year and a half, I just used the plain toner black and white printer. I got the 30 sheet label sheets and I printed all my Amazon labels on that. And that was not a problem. As long as the label doesn't come off, you're fine. Um, this, these are nice simply because they don't use ink. They're thermal label, label writers, so they use heat. And so in the long run, you're not having to buy the ink, but on the flip side, you have to buy the rolls that go in these. So they come with basically label rolls like this. Um, and I find that they're a lot more convenient because of the quantity that I do. But if you do small quantities, you're only shipping in 10 or 20 items at a time, go ahead and just use a regular uh, printer with the Avery 30 sheets. Um, so you don't have to, but it is recommended if you start to do large quantities. Question. Okay, let's catch up with some questions and comments. Bethany P says, hey, y'all watching while washing dishes as usual. Awesome. Hey, Bethany. Uh, Cheryl Brown says, hey, Bethany P, I'm watching Jeopardy and, and watching at the same time. Now that's a multitasker <laughs> that's right there. That's good. Jason Lee says, do you look up prices on eBay for used items while you're out? Yes, absolutely. I always do research with this handy dandy <laughs> tool. Um, I'll look up on eBay. I'll look up on Poshmark. I'll look, I'll even Google it sometimes in the store okay. if I find uh, it. A very important tip. You'll find the item on eBay. Look at the completed listing. Yes. That's important. When searching on eBay, if you want to list something for $5,000, if I wanted to list this hat for $5,000 on eBay, I could. doesn't mean it's going to sell for that. If I click the completed listings, I'll actually see how much did this hat actually sell for and on what date. You know, so that is really helpful. Always look at completed listings. Because you may find the hat is listed for $5,000 and never, ever, ever has sold. But if it's in green, it means it's sold. Uh, Joanne asked, do you use Inventory Lab? And I think that is on your list coming up. That is coming up, yes. I will address Inventory Lab, yes. Uh, 
uh, Kathy Hershey says, where can I get those bags, those poly bags? Poly bags, I buy them right off of eBay or Amazon. I just go and look and find out, is it cheaper on eBay or Amazon today? And sometimes I buy half and half. So, um, yeah, just buy, they're called poly mailing bags or poly mailers. Um, and then you can look at the different, are they resealable or are they the ones where you pull off the sticky and seal them? So, yeah. CJ, uh, CJ Spano says, I work for the Postal Service. The biggest mistake for some people that ship is not using a strong box and enough tape. Very yes, good, good use tape. tons of tape. I always Very like hospital corner my tape corners on boxes uh, and stuff. Dab Kitty Sparkle, love the name. Dab says, Kitty Sparkle. Off subject, but any advice on taking a photo of a black dress? It keeps coming out lacking detail of the fabric. <laughs> I totally agree with you there. Um, I have this mannequin and I had a hard time taking black shirts and black dresses, pictures on this. And so I, um, someone's borrowing it right now, um, but I use a clear or a white mannequin. Um, and so I'll take pictures of black items on a lighter background. So that's what I would suggest. Either have it hang on a hanger. It might actually look better hanging on a hanger in front of a white background than it would on a black mannequin. And so lighter background. Um, and then try to do use your filters on your camera. That helps sometimes. Uh, Christopher West says, you got yelled at by Jeff Bezos. Well, not, not exactly. Uh, we got yelled at by Amazon when the yeah. box was bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Joanne uh, writes uh, or asks, that's the Turbo Twin that holds two labels? I believe so. You can see it's got two label slots, and it's about this wide. It looks just like this, but it's like this wide. And it has the big label writer and the skinny little slot like this one. So, yeah, I think it's the Turbo Twin. I don't have that one, so I don't know for sure. Joe Marks comments, you can get the big shipping labels uh, free Signing up for a business account at UPS, yes. Okay, yes. yes. Ann Brown, what time do you start and end your workday? Um, I get the kids on the bus at 7.30, have some coffee at home. I generally start around 8.30 during the day, and then I have to usually leave about... Um, I usually run from 8.30 to 4.30 is my normal work day simply because I have to always pick up my daughter who decides she needs to play every sport under the sun. So we're usually leaving my house about 4.30, 4.45 to go pick her up from practice or from a game or headed to a game. So that's kind of 8.30 to 4.30 is my normal. But then a lot of times I am back over here around this time of night. Uh, I feed the family supper and then I'm packaging, which I'll show you my pile of packages. Actually, you can scan over there right now. This is... Um, basically two days worth of shipping for me that's a normal two-day shipping amount for me Great. so all uh, right lots more questions tanya wells matthews says hello from las vegas nevada hey i was out there for asd market week last year that's right. hot mess budget mom says uh we have one of those at work the dymo they are easy to use they are i love the dymo uh, it makes it faster too andy 2101c says hi from the uk hey thanks for jumping on what time is it in the uk go ahead and comment because right now it is a little after seven in this central time zone here deb kitty sparkle great thanks so much i'll try that keith peterson do you pay taxes on pallets or or cases on bulk yes i always pay taxes if you watch any of my unboxings i break down how much i pay how much i pay for shipping and how much i pay for taxes yes i always pay taxes uh let's see cj spano uh direct liquidation or bulk which one to use i guess i use bulk.com is the easiest one because of the fully manifested um, manifest that i get Angie two one uh, oh one C, I think it's from the UK. Says it is one ten in the morning. One ten in the morning. You are a night owl or a morning owl. I don't know which one it is. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm always up at one o'clock. So we're caught up. Keep yeah. Going. Okay. Great. So I am. I've gone through supply is number one number two smartphone number three and they're not in a particular order number four disinfecting wipes number five scales uh number six we've talked about the label writer or or a regular printer i still use a full-size printer um uh, make sure if you love this content, go ahead and buy me a coffee. Um, you can hit the donate button below, or if you want to be a full-time subscriber and get exclusive content, you can go to my Patreon page, link in the description below. Number seven, I love this USPS pickup. I'm going to come over here because I would hate to have into my vehicle and then drive to the post office. That takes time, even though I'm only about two miles from the post office. And then I have to carry all of these into the post office. So what I usually do is I'm going to actually, I packaged all of these things 
and I'm gonna put them right outside my door and schedule a pickup. I actually already have it scheduled. And the post office guy, when he delivers my mail, will come and pick all of this up for free. It's a glorious thing. Now, if you're shipping to Amazon, you do have to bring them to a, a UPS, which is different from United States Postal Service, a UPS uh, store um, or someone who's affiliated with doing UPS. So that's a typical shipment for me every two days. Um, and so, I definitely think that that's a huge time saver and a huge hassle saver. Um, so that's number seven. We have a question. Yes. Uh, Jeffrey Wilson asked, is ASD good to go to? Yes, I would definitely say yes. Um, it's free to go to if you sign up ahead of time. Uh, we just had to pay for our lodging and how to get there. So we took a flight. Um, it was definitely an eye opener for me. Um, and you'll learn a lot there. Uh, Heather's Place asked, what is FBA? FBA is Fulfillment by Amazon. It basically means that you list, you set the price just like you would on an eBay platform or a Poshmark platform. You set the price and then you label it with an Amazon barcode that's particular to your account and then you ship it to the Amazon warehouse and they handle it from there. So basically you're a third party seller on the Amazon platform. That's what FBA is, Fulfillment by Amazon. So the fees are a little bit higher but it takes the half a lot of you having to put a load of shipping in all the time and it also makes it available for all the prime customers on Amazon. Heather's Place ask again, uh, the box on the floor, are they for FBA? No, these are mostly Poshmark, uh, my Shopify store, and I did actually sell this, this one here is, um, Amazon Merchant Fulfill. So a lot of you ask, do I sell Merchant Fulfill? And yes, I still sell Merchant Fulfill, mainly because that's a larger item. I don't want to pay storage fees on that. And it sells very slow. So that's why I chose to Merchant Fulfill that one. Quirky Girl has asked the question, who are you saying wins in the end? Jesus wins in the end, always. That's my tagline at the end. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, Ann Dar uh, donated $2. Thanks, Ann. I will get more espresso in my system and talk faster. <laughs> uh, Julie asked, do you think it would be beneficial to have two Poshmark closets, one for men's and one for women's clothing? Um, I don't necessarily think that that would be a good idea, to be honest. That's my personal opinion. You can if it helps your brain. But um, you gain followers on a Poshmark store and you have to... Um, keep gaining more followers. And so if you have two stores, you're splitting your followers between two different sets of people. And then you're gonna have to share separately on each store. Whereas if you have one store, you can share everything all in one sitting. To me, I think it would be harder to manage two stores, but that's totally up to you and your choice. Uh, Landshark Picker says, good evening, everyone. That's an awesome name, I love Landshark. Landshark picker i'm glad you're not in the middle of the ocean <laughs> yes uh cheryl brown had to hop off so it's good for okay for the time. all right jorks asks can you sell the big name brands on poshmark that are normally gated on amazon yes yeah there um poshmark i don't think has any restrictions on specific brands now if you guys are poshmark sellers and you've come across restrictions on specific brands please let me know but i know actually poshmark encourages name brand selling Landshark Picker asks, does anyone do retail arbitrage for Walmart? Uh, for yes, I do retail arbitrage. I go to Walmart and flip a lot on Amazon from actually the Walmart retail store. Yes. yes. Don't forget the, the little ones too, like the CVS and the Walgreens. CVS, Walgreens, um, Fred's, uh, you know, mm -hmm. Dollar General, all those places. I, I retail arbitrage money. everything. Take that app and scan. Uh, Mike? Kritzker asked, uh, you didn't read my comment. Oh, go ahead and... Loud. Yeah. Kritzker. I'm sorry, Mike. Yeah, it goes... We get a lot of comments really fast because yeah. we have a lot of viewers on right now. Go resend it and we'll keep an eye out for it. Yeah. Sorry, Mike. Uh, let's see. Uh, Cheryl Brown says, just says, ask loads of questions for me. Uh, <laughs> Heather's Place asked, what's your favorite platform to sell on? My favorite platform to sell on is Amazon, simply because it's just easy. Uh, you don't have to take pictures because you're using the stock photo. Uh, you get more bang for your buck as far as uh, how much you can sell everything for. Everything sells about a third more as it does on eBay. And it's just a monster of a beast for traffic. And so, um, and plus, because I send everything into the warehouse, once I get it listed and shipped off, it's gone out of my brain and I just watch the money roll in. So that's the, the one I like the most, although it does have the most rules and regulations, but th that's the one I like the most. 
Uh, God first love others says I ran into a guy at Walmart today doing the same thing scanning prices awesome yes, yes. there's mm -hmm. lots out there uh, Landshark Picker says that he's working on a Chrome extension to help with retail arbitrage from Walmart to Amazon that would be awesome. yeah awesome hey let me know when you get that up and running so I'd love to try it out for you uh, let's see. Okay. okay so we're at Number one supplies, 10 things that make life easier as a reseller. Number one supplies, two smartphone, three Amazon seller app, four disinfecting wipe, five scales, six label printer, USPS pickup, and someone asked a question a while ago about Inventory Lab or another tracking program that you use. I love Inventory Lab. It, it allows me to tell me where I bought the item from, um, how much I'm making per item. It even calculates in how much it costs to ship to the warehouse so I know fully that I'm making 100% profit on it. Um, and it tracks anytime I get a return. It's connected directly to my Amazon account. And so I use that to show me, oh, I'm, you know, I'm making good money on this product. Why don't I buy it anymore? And so it tracks some of the stuff that I know I buy on a regular basis. And it tells me from what um, um, distributors I get things from. So it helps me to kind of keep track of, oh, you know, I got these hats. Where did I get those from? And all I have to do is look up this hat, go to Inventory Lab. It tells me where I bought it from. And so, um, all, by the way, all these hats are for sale on my Hooked on Picking page. Um, just go ahead and look for those. They're really, really a discounted price. So Mike, uh, Mike Kritzker uh, comments again. He was, I think he has a question about taxes. So it okay. says, uh, um, I'm trying to boil it down here real quick. Uh, how do we pay taxes? Okay, how do we pay taxes? I am in no way, shape, or form a tax professional. I just do my own taxes. And so um, we get a 1099 from um, the platforms that we sell on. Uh, I do believe that the number is 20000 in sales, not in profit, but in sales, that you'll get a 1099 um, K for eBay. For eBay. Uh, Amazon, you'll automatically get a 1099. And what you have to do is itemize out all your the products because you get a 1099 I think one year we had one that said we made hundred and fifty thousand dollars but I, we didn't make hundred and fifty thousand dollars but they count that as income until you itemize all your product costs your supplies your uh, utility bills all the things that pertain to your business you'll have to itemize out and so that's the only advice I could give you on what I do is I just track all of the expenditures that I have so that when I get that 1099, I can take it off on my taxes. Right. So, Mike, I usually get involved with the taxes uh, time. It, it's very important to keep good records yep. through the year. Yeah. Um, keep keeping the income separate from your own family. Doing uh, a separate checking account usually important. helps because then you can track it a little bit There's better. You can yep. write off, which is wonderful. You just got to keep the, the yep. record. In keep the records. Yep. Heather's Place asks, I did my first shipment today. FBA was super stressful, but I did it finally. Yes. Good job. So once you get that first one under your belt, it's going to be smooth sailing after that. So good job for getting that first one done. Heather's Place asks, can you show videos on how to use the Amazon reseller app? Tips and tricks. Thanks. Yes, I have actually a three-part series um, Amazon seller app. Um, I will try to stick it um, after, I know this is live, and so after it goes live, I'll try to stick Amazon seller app, the three videos that I do on that um, in the description. Um, so it'll probably go, be out there about um, an hour um, after this goes live. So also, if you like the content that I give, feel free to go ahead and purchase a coffee for me. Uh, you can just hit the donate button or you can support me on Patreon if you'd like. Yes, question. Mike Krisker says that he also scans for fun, drives his girlfriend crazy when they <laughs> go to stores. Awesome. Uh, Xavier says, hi there, good evening. I just started my Poshmark closet and in one week, I've gotten over 2,000 followers. Hey, good job. One week, 2,000 followers. That's really, really good. Just great. share up a storm. Great, 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 great. Awesome. Uh, Xavier says three items over $160 in just the three items. Thank nice. You, you must have some nice stuff on your store. This is cool. It's encouraging for you, Heather. He says, thank you. I started Poshmark because of you. Awesome. So, awesome. Thanks. It sounds like you're making really good money. Yeah, you are. I, I'd like to sell the stuff yeah. you're selling. <laughs> you can send some my way. That'd be great. All right. Uh, Joanne says, do you um, do you ever not end up spending the, uh, or excuse me, do you ever not end up sending the shit that they send, you, send to you in Illinois, I'm referring to? Seems Illinois breaks up shipments more than Seller Central. 
I'm not when you're shipping items into the Amazon warehouse, I think is what you're Oh yeah. Um no, I always send all the shipments because I kind of just average it all out. I know sometimes their um Amazon FBA will disperse out if you've got a lot especially if it's a larger item or if you've got multitudes. Like if I had fifty of these hats, they're gonna split it up into multiple different warehouses. But I kind of just average the whole thing and my inventory lab usually takes that into consideration. Um and so I overestimate a lot of the shipping. Uh, on my inventory lab um, program. So um, I figure I've already purchased it and I've already put the money in. So go ahead and just ship it in and get it sold. AV04100 says, hello, Hooks is love your faces. Oh, awesome. I think I know who that is. <laughs> Someone I know for love your face too. All right. Keep going with your list. That's okay. Good. All right. So number one, supplies. Number two, smartphone. Number three, Amazon seller app. Number four, disinfectant wipes, label printer, scales, USPS pickup, inventory lab, or a tracking program. And number nine is a biggie to keep you motivated so that you don't lose your mind when you're not having a good week. Have a goals board, okay? I have um, big dry erase boards that I keep track of. The goals that I want um, to basically have each month um, on my various different platforms. I've got number limits that I want to hit. And then I've also got big dream goals board. Like I want to be able to pay for my vacation with my revenue um, that we're going to go on this summer. And I want to be able to put X amount of dollars into a retirement fund. And I want to put X amount of dollars into this fund to buy a new set of dress for my daughter's room. So have goals. They can be as large or as small as you like, but just make sure they're realistically attainable. And that will keep driving you on the days that you're just like, Ugh, I don't want to do it today. So I have many days like that where I need to look at my goals board. Oh, and it motivates me to keep moving. So goals board is number nine. Um, and then I'm going to go to number 10. Number 10 is something that I have lovingly increased since August. Um, John Penn of Penn Builders in my area um, has built this lovely building space. You need to have a space that's exclusive for your business. I started with 200 square feet, which I believe is about from here to here. <laughs> that was about my space. Um, I do have an old video of my old workspace that was in my home. My kids are glad I'm out of the home because now I don't take over their fun hangout space. It became their hangout space once I moved out here. But if you kind of scan, this is what my space normally looks like. Yes, I look like I live in Hoarderville, <laughs> but it's really bad right now because I just got three pallets kind of all at once. Um, and so these will eventually be moved out this week. It's been very cold. We live in the country, so we're going to get rid of the boxes very swiftly. But this is my normal space. So it's, it's always a work in progress. But just remember, this kind of stuff used to be in my house. And now it's not because I have an awesome space. So um, this is 720 square feet where I get to work on, um, um, on all of my business. When I come over here, it's a lot easier to stay focused. Yeah, you like my hooked on picking logo. Um, I, eventually, when I clean off those, can't get to it. I know. Yeah, I'm gonna clean off those tables. I promise. But um, it helps me to stay focused um, and do my work while I'm here. When I was working out of my home, I would get very easily distracted by the TV, by the coffee pot, by the piles of laundry that I needed to fold, and I wouldn't focus as much on my business. When I come over here, I stay focused. And so um, if you've got a space where you can go into a room, close a door and just focus on your business, that's going to be the best thing. So the top 10 things are make sure you have supplies. Number one, number two, smartphone. You need this is pivotal for your online reselling world. It tracks everything for you and helps you scan your Amazon seller app. Use your Amazon seller app. I'll try to link down in the description those three that I explain every nuance of the Amazon seller app up to date as of right now, which is February 2019. Disinfecting wipes for cleaning off anything that is used or has some stickiness or something on it based on where you get it. Scales, making sure you have a scale. If you just do small items up to 20 pounds is fine. Label printer, um, it's not necessary, but you definitely need a regular printer for sure. You can use the 30 label sheets from Avery that you just buy at Walmart, or you can get a label writer, which I absolutely love mine because I don't have to buy ink. Um, also utilizing the United States Postal Service pickup for all the packages. 
inventory lab or some sort of a way to track your information. For the first two years, I didn't use inventory lab. I just tracked everything with an Excel spreadsheet. That's doable as well, but it's definitely labor intensive. But it became labor intensive because we were selling so much. Having a goals board to stay motivated. And then number 10 is space. So my top 10 things that make life easier for a reseller, these are definite things that I think are needed. And we got some more questions. Just a couple here. Uh, Sakara asked, what app do you use to track your inventory? What was that one more time? Um, inventory Lab is what I use. It's actually a subscription-based um, program, and it uh, connects directly to your Amazon account. So that's what helps me because I'm primarily an Amazon FBA seller. And then whatever I can't sell on Amazon, I sell on Poshmark and eBay. Land Shark Picker asks, what part of the country are you in? I'm in the central part of the country. I'm right, right near St. Louis, about 30 minutes outside of St. Louis on the Illinois side is where we're at. So right smack dab in the middle. <laughs> Awesome. All right. So um, if you love this content, feel free to give me a coffee. There's a little donate button below. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to my patrons. I've got people that support me. I've got 14 separate patrons right now and they get exclusive content. I shout out a post right before this live feed, letting them know what the live feed was going to be about. And so they get uh, kind of a heads up anytime I'm going to do a live Q and A. They also get input on what I do my Q and A's on and um, they get exclusive videos video content that none of you have ever seen because it's just for them. Um, you can start as low as five and go up higher. Um, me and my husband did an awesome uh, back and forth interview on how we started from when he used to run the business and then handed it over to me and when I gave him heart attacks when I spent money when I first took over the business and things like that. So you get to kind of see the man behind the camera on that video if you'd like to become a patron. The, um, but all of you that are my YouTube subscribers, I'm over 28,000 subscribers. I just wanna say a big thank you to you guys. Thank you so much uh, for those of you who donate when I'm on my live feeds and for the questions because those are questions I don't always think of and I'm really thankful that you guys ask them. So um, hopefully this these 10 things that make life easier as a reseller list will help you. it help you maybe get set up when you first get started. Like I said, I'm always available to help on my reseller calls, hookedonpicking.com, go ahead check those out. I've got a couple of other resources on that website. Um, and then if you want an awesome hat, you know, guys, you know, you must have these, you know, you must have these. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for jumping on live. Hopefully an evening live broadcast has been beneficial to you guys who don't get to see me during the day. Uh, and um, if you have any more questions, throw them in the comments below. Check out all the links I put down in the description. And remember in the end, Jesus wins.